one of the great changes in the practice of family law in the uh, 31 years I've been doing this has been the advent of mediation. Uh, back in the day when I first started, uh, we were litigating and trying a lot of cases, and today we settle just about anything. And one of the reasons for that, I'm convinced, is the use of mediation, which back then was almost unheard of, then of course became mandatory in custody and placement, and it's now routinely used in most of the courts I appear in. Uh, if mediation hasn't been accomplished by the pretrial, the judge will order it, and if um, uh, the court doesn't order it, uh, in this office we always offer it to the other side and it's usually accepted. And it's a pretty remarkable procedure in that cases which you would think you're so far apart, you're just wasting time in mediation, either narrow substantially during the mediation or settle at the mediation. And uh, I had cases where I thought, my God, we're probably just wasting time and money, but we walk out with a settlement. A, a lot of it deals with the, the process, but also with the quality of the mediator. And some mediators, like everything else in this world, are better than others, and good mediators can do remarkable jobs in helping to settle cases. So I'm going to give a short marketing pitch for myself in terms of as a mediator, uh, because um, I've done a little bit over the years, and um, uh, generally one, two, three cases a year, some lawyers will call me and ask me to do it. It's hard work, it's difficult. Um, I thought I was pretty good at it, and then I began to think, you know, like everything else that you think is intuitive and that you can do on your own, there seems to be a lot of these training sessions, a lot of literature, a lot of uh, things out there that you can learn that maybe can make you better. Not dissimilar to people who think they can practice law on their own, but as we all know, it really helps to have some training and have some experience. So last fall, I signed up for a training course uh, because I've been getting more calls uh, as time goes by to serve as a mediator. I think that's somewhat related to having less black hair and more gray hair. It seems that as that transition goes on, there's a transition towards people thinking maybe I can help them settle their cases. So I, I looked for a course, and I found one through University of Wisconsin Extension, taught by Perry Mays, who's a lawyer, was a, a mediator in Washington County. Um, and I've known Perry a little bit. I thought it might be an interesting course. And I want to do it a little bit, I don't know if apprehensive is the right word, but a little bit cautious, thinking, well, I've done you know, a number of mediations. I've had my clients through uh, mediation many, many times who have represented a client. Um, I don't know how much is out there, but uh, uh, maybe there's something. And as it turns out, there was a lot out there. It was a 40-hour training course, and it was really interesting, and I got a tremendous amount out of it. And I'm going to talk about three areas uh, that came up in the course that were emphasized and I thought made a substantial difference in um, how I'll be mediating cases in the future. Uh, the first is I've often heard the phrase that for people to settle cases, they have to differentiate between what are their positions and what are their interests. And taking the course was the first time I think I fully understood that people have a position, but it makes it difficult to settle because this is what you think is fair. This is what you want. This is my position, and I'm going to take it. And good mediators figure out a way to get the people off of the concept of a position and more towards what is in their interests, what overall, in a more of a global sense, gets them on a path to where they want to go. Second is the art of listening. And I learned this a number of years ago when I was a guardian ad litem and I got invited to sit in on a mediation conducted by two of the greatest mediators of all time, Mimi and Chick Nickel, who Mimi was the mediator for uh, Waukesha County Family Court Counseling Service. And it was a case I was guardian ad litem on, and I sent the couple to Mimi and Chick, who's her brother, for mediation. And uh, they needed some help, and they said that they'd like me to sit in on the next mediation session with the permission of both parties, with the understanding that my job was mostly to listen and only jump in if they asked me to or if I felt I could be effective. And 
sitting and listening and not talking is not my strong suit. <laughs> it's not something I'm used to doing, and it was a new experience for me. I ended up doing it five, six, seven times, perhaps, with Mimi and Chick. And what's fascinating was the difference when you're at one of these sessions and you can only listen. I think it was um, Yogi Berra, who uh, among the famous yogiisms, one of them was you can hear a lot if you just listen or something like that. And the truth is, is that you, if you spend time and concentrate, there's an art and you hear things and things permeate into you more so than if you're listening while preparing for the next thing to say. And the mediation training did a good job uh, in a lot more detail than I can go through right now in terms of discussing the concept and how good mediators listen to what the people are saying and aren't just getting the surface amount while preparing to respond to it and make the next comment. And finally, the concept of using the process to help people get to a resolution was stressed quite a bit in the course. And it's an interesting one because, again, it goes sort of counter to my normal type of practice, which is I like to get to the bottom line. I'm not a process person. Uh, I like to get to the result and to the substance of things. And if that could be done, that's fine. But sometimes you have to let the process play out. And you have to use the process to let people have their say, listen to them while they're doing it, and being able to transition by use of the process, by use of listening, to getting to the party's interests, tied all three of these together, didn't I, um, to try to get to a resolution uh, uh, at the end of the mediation. Um, I thought going into it that, gee, 40 hours is a lot of time to discussing things I've already done and have been through as a lawyer many, many times. Um, as it turned out, um, it wasn't. Uh, the time was valuable spent, valuably spent, and, and I learned a tremendous amount by it. Um, so if you have a case, and here's the marketing pitch, uh, that you think you'd like someone with uh, a lot of gray hair, there's still a couple black ones up there, so get them while you can, but a lot of the uh, gray hair up there, I've been practicing law now 31 years, um, uh, give me a call. Um, I do it on a sliding fee scale. In other words, I'm willing to adjust the cost based upon the ability and the needs of the parties, and I'd be happy to discuss it with you. So if this is something that might be interested to you in one of your cases, uh, call me at 414-272-5632. Shoot me an email at gherman at loebherman.com.